Let us see a peripheral smear from a child less than 10 years old. Here one thing we can appreciate is that the WBC count is markedly increased. Here is the RBC and these are the mature lymphocytes. These mature lymphocytes are around the size of, about the size of RBC. And they have got a dark blue nucleus. Mature lymphocytes has got very scant cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is not appreciable. So whatever we see is the nucleus. And the nucleus is very dark blue. Why? Because mature lymphocytes are terminally differentiated cells. They are inactive cells. So they have got a condensed chromatin. So dark blue nucleus. Compared to these mature lymphocytes, here are some other atypical cells. They are around 3 to 4 times the size of this mature lymphocyte. High nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and cytoplasm is very scant. So these enlarged cells with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and look at the color of the nucleus. In mature lymphocyte, they are very dark blue, condensed chromatin. Compared to this, these atypical cells has got a less blue or light blue nucleus. Why? They have got a dispersed chromatin. These are blast cells. Blast cells are neoplastic cells. Neoplastic cells means they are actively proliferating. So compared to the condensed chromatin in a mature lymphocyte, these active neoplastic cells, they have got a dispersed chromatin because their chromatin unwinds. Cells are rapidly proliferating. So they have got a dispersed chromatin. So this less blue appearance of the nucleus. So they have got a dispersed chromatin. And this whitish area, small whitish dots, these are the prominent nucleoli. So high nucleus cytoplasmic ratio, many times larger than the mature lymphocyte with the condensed chromatin and dark blue nucleus. And these whitish areas, these are the prominent nucleoli, dispersed chromatin and prominent nucleoli. So this is a case of acute leukemia. For calling acute leukemia, how many blasts are required? More than 20 percentage blast either in the peripheral blood or bone marrow. In the peripheral blood, this is peripheral blood smear. But in bone marrow also, more than 20 percentage in blast in the peripheral blood or bone marrow, we can call it as acute leukemia. Various special stains we can use. Myeloperoxidase. Myeloperoxidase gives brownish color in myeloplast, acute myeloid leukemia. Sudan black also positivity in the acute myeloblastic leukemia. And acute lymphoblastic leukemia we can use periodic acid shift. Periodic acid shift will give magenta colored block positivity. Magenta colored block positivity in PAS in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In acute monoblastic leukemia, there is non specific esterase. These are the special stain. Sudan black and myeloperoxidase for myeloid leukemia. PAS, magenta colored block positivity in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And non specific esterase for the monoblast. So, more than 20 percentage, we can call it as acute leukemia, high nucleus cytoplasmic ratio, dispersed chromatin, and prominent nucleoli. So this is a case of less than 10 years. So most probably it could be acute lymphoblast leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia usually occur in the elderly age group. In uh, children, usually it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And here is a hand mirror cell. Hand mirror cells are because of this cytoplasmic extension. Here we can appreciate this nucleus with high nucleus cytoplasmic ratio. And there is extension of cytoplasm just like the handle of a mirror. So these are called hand mirror cells. Not specific for acute lymphoblast leukemia but can be seen more in this acute lymphoblast leukemia. So Acute leukemia is a neosplastic proliferation of the hematopoietic precursor cells due to some acquired mutations. And these acquired mutations 
impede differentiation or blocks differentiation. Because of this mutation that blocks differentiation, there is accumulation of immature cells called blast in the peripheral blood or bone marrow. So this neoplastic proliferation of hematopoietic precursor cells due to some acquired mutation that blocks differentiation and that leads to accumulation of this immature cells blast in the bone marrow. Regarding prognosis in acute lymphoblast leukemia, most cases in 2 to 10 years that is got a good prognosis and they are associated usually with a translocation, translocation 1221. Translocation 1221 is ETV6 run X1, ETV6 run X1, translocation 1221 usually in 2 to 10 years old. That has got a good prognosis. Less than 2 years, they has got a bad prognosis. In infants, Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is usually associated with MLL rearrangement or KMT2A rearrangement. MLL or KMT2A rearrangement. That has got a bad prognosis. They expresses neuronal glial antigen 2, NG2, that is associated with CNS invasion. CNS invasion. So, in less than two years, for infants, usually MLL rearrangement or KMT2A rearrangement. NG2 expression and CNS invasion. More than 10 years also bad prognosis. That is usually associated with, the, some cases are associated with the translocation 922, just like in CML, Philadelphia chromosome, translocation 922, that is associated with a bad prognosis. In CML, translocation 922, the fusion protein is P210 usually, that has got increased tyrosine kinase activity. So there is cellular proliferation. Increase tyrosine in his activity, translocation 922, P210. In acute lymphoblastic leukemia, also translocation 922, BCR ABL, the fusion product is P190 usually instead of P210. In acute lymphoblastic leukemia, translocation 922. That is usually seen in adults, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, translocation 922. Hyperdiploid, more than 50 chromosome, usually good prognosis. Hypodiploidy, less than 45 chromosome, bad prognosis. Then regarding the clinical manifestation. Suppose in a marrow there is lot uh, in a marrow there is lot of cells, megakaryocytes producing platelets, then uh, erythroid lineage producing RBC. So many cells are there. But what happens in acute leukemia? There is accumulation of this immature blast cells. This immature blast cell suppresses other lineage because of physical crowding and this actively proliferating neoplastic blast cells may use all the nutrients. There is competition for nutrients, physical crowding, etc. So there is suppression of other lineage. So there might be the suppression of megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes produce platelets. So less platelets can lead to bleeding. And suppression of erythroid lineage. What happens? Less RBCs are produced. And there is anemia. So there is less RBCs to carry uh, hemoglobin with oxygen. So there is weakness, fatigue, dizziness, etc. Anemia will be there. And due to less platelet production, there will be bleeding. So anemia, bleeding. And also these mutations block differentiation or impede differentiation. So there is no mature cells. Mature cells like neutrophils are not formed. So there is increased chance of infection. Frequent infection can be there. So the clinical presentation is frequent infection due to less neutrophils. Bleeding due to less platelet production. Megakaryocytes are suppressed. And erythroid series suppressed. Anemia, weakness, fatigue business etc. So this is all about acute leukemia now. Thank you.